Hello there. I'll start directly with this question. Do you believe in mistakes? Do you think you can make a mistake? And this is a, a very interesting point and a very interesting question that I believe we barely ask ourselves. And I think it's deeply connected with both physics being human and Zen. And this is what this is what I wanted to talk to you about in this video. And this is a bit of a reaction from my side after watching uh, videos from a channel called Hardcore Zen. And when I say reaction, I don't mean reaction in a in a how to say it, in a in a in a very violent way, but a reaction as a as a as a consequence of, of listening to this person and thinking about mistakes. And mistakes is this this well the concept of making a mistake is that well something went wrong and there was a possibility the possibility that one could have done differently. And with this, I don't want to get into free will because every time I think of, oh, there is a possibility that something could have happened or something else could have happened, then one thinks, well, uh, do I have free will? Was I able to choose or not at that point in time? Or maybe I just didn't have a choice and no one has a choice and things are going in a certain direction and who knows. But I don't want to get there because that's the topic for maybe another video and I have some ideas about that I can share with you later. So going back to mistakes. One thing that surprises me a lot is that people that did PhDs in physics, people that are deeply scientific, they hate it when I say that if they really believe in the laws of physics and if they think that the laws of physics are impeccable, correct, even if we don't know them, but if there are laws of physics, then there are no possibility for mistakes because those laws of physics are perfect by definition because that's reality. So whatever happens given those laws or given that reality, is perfect it's, it happens due to these laws so how could there be mistakes and if one is inside the system of, of uh, well inside reality then those laws also apply to us so therefore thinking in this way there are two possible paths one is that you consider yourself to not be part of reality, but that reality doesn't apply to you in the same way that it applies to everything else, which scientifically speaking doesn't make much sense. Or you say, okay, I am part of reality and everything is part of reality. So therefore everything is flowing in a way. And I use flowing to say happening in a way that by default is perfect and Okay, maybe perfect sounds bad, but because some people would say, well, it's, it's not nice that this happens to me or this is happening, but I would say it's happening in the way that it happens because that's reality. And therefore, how could there be mistakes? And as I'm saying this, I can feel things in me that I say, well, no, but you make mistakes and the other part, no, no, but rationally speaking, there are no mistakes. And I think that's the, the beautiful and scary nature of being human is that we can try to grasp this and I can say it in words, maybe I cannot write the math or even if we could write the math, we can do it. But whenever we forget about it, we are back to believing that somehow we are not part of reality. 
somehow we are outside, we're observing or, or acting on something else, and to that something else all those rules apply, but we are not just that. And these ideas in my mind right now link to the concept of duality, uh, which is one thing that Zen talks about and many philosophies talk about, like this duality of being able to look at the same concept from two points of view and that both are not valid, but both are, let's say, practical depending on the situation that one is in. And maybe now it's a point where I should connect this to Zen. And first I want to apologize because I may misinterpret this in a very, 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 very uh, <laughs> terrible way, but In terms of, of Zen uh, or Buddhism, I've heard or read many times this idea of uh, causality and cause and effect, which is something that appears repeatedly in Zen, which is how do we break from the cycle of cause and effect of birth and death and birth and death. So there is this idea that things are causing each other and one somehow one wants to break out and one of the ways to break out of that is by meditation, by enlightenment, and connecting to, to the superior self or it or whatever it is. And at the same time, when reading Zen um, writings and lectures, Zen masters say you should also detach from the idea of trying to break from cause and effect, because that's also an idea and whenever you're trying to think of that, you're breaking the world into two. You're saying that there is cause and effect, but you can break from cause and effect. And I know that I'm not doing a great job at putting this clearly right now. The idea in the end is that these two perspectives, from a, from a human point of view, these two perspectives of everything is reality and reality follows if you want certain rules or certain way that maybe we cannot write down completely, because, for example, quantum mechanics right now and gravity don't seem to match very well. But we know or we believe that there is something going on and that's reality. And from one point of view, we say, yes, we are everything is part of reality and we are part of reality. And therefore, we can take a lot of conclusions and ideas from that. And on the other hand, we may say, Yes, but no, I am this independent being that takes decisions and can make mistakes. And others too can make mistakes. And both are valid. Probably none of them is the complete truth. I think the fact that everything is relative is more likely to be it. But it's just so difficult to grasp because it breaks our the way we think, the way we are designed, if I may use that word to proceed in life we feel we make mistakes and as much as we want to rationalize rationalize that there are no mistakes we will still believe in mistakes and many times feel bad when we made a mistake and we may have written down I don't know on the ceiling so we go lay down to go to bed and see there are no mistakes and try to rationalize it but it doesn't work because there's something stronger than that in ourselves. And actually, if it were to work, that we are able to believe that there are no mistakes, then it would break the whole substance of who we are and what we do. And that would be, I guess, pretty painful. Okay, I'm going a bit here on some ramifications. But yeah, this is what happens, for example, the, this loss of identity, of, of uh, sometimes depression, it happens also through meditation. 
meditation can also be a terrible, well, not terrible, but a, a very harmful tool because it uncovers something that can be very, very, I'm looking for the word, can bring you down and it's this groundless state that all those Zen people talk about. And what is interesting is that typically when one reaches this groundless state, then that's when you say, okay, fine. And you go back to normal reality where you believe in yourself. And then you go into meditation and then you go back down or up and you have the feeling that everything is okay. Everything is perfect. You're in total harmony and then something shakes you and you start, you go from egolessness to to being to believing in your ego a lot and then you go in this cycle up and down up and down and I think that for a normal functioning being that cycle is what is normal and trying to stay in one or the other that's what doesn't work and Alan Watts has a very nice talk about it um, if I find it I'm going to put it down in the comments description sorry okay I think that's enough <laughs> now I can see my mind going into different directions and I'm gonna stop there um, I hope that's somehow clear or unclear in a way that it can be thought and reasoned about to clarify it and more to come later cheers